Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Today we are joined by Jim Campbell, and Jim owns a collection of websites in the honeymoon space. So as you can imagine, we're talking all about travel. Now, Jim has a great background in online marketing with a lot of different things on his resume, but he started his first honeymoon website in 2019. You probably know where this story is going. When 2020 hit, the pretty much the entire travel industry shut down. But Jim kept going, kept publishing content and growing his website, even during a time when the site was earning virtually no money. And as a result, when people started traveling again after the pandemic, this site pretty much exploded, not only in terms of traffic, but in terms of revenue. So we spent the first half of the podcast talking all about how he grew that website, how he picked topics, how he wrote articles, uh, how he handles not being able to travel to every single one of these locations with his content, backlinks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, just recently this year, he had the opportunity to acquire another very big player in the honeymoon space. He went on to buy and purchase that website just a couple months ago. And so we talk in the second half of the interview all about that process of analyzing it, buying it, and then what he's going to be doing with these sites moving forward. Will he merge them? Will he keep them separate? How he's going to grow the brand and basically level up to turn um, these multiple brands in the honeymoon space into something quite a bit larger. We do touch on AI. I do ask him about the role AI is going to play um, in the travel space, but also what he's doing to combat that. And he shares some very interesting thoughts about that. Overall, Jim has a lot of value to share, and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Before we jump into the podcast, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. In this video, I will show you how we landed a placement on BBC and dozens of links in massive regional online publications such as Wares Online, Daily Post, and many more. This PR campaign was about the easiest place to pass your driving test for the first time in the UK. This is how we've done it. We simply went to DVLA website, found the latest car driving test data by test center and downloaded the data in a CSV format. Once we had the data, all we had to do is to look at the number of total tests per test center, then look at the number of first time passes to calculate the percentage of people who passed their test for the first time. Once we had the percentage numbers, we created a press release with our findings. Then we went to Rocks Hill and found journalists who talk about driving tests and also looked for journalists who write in regional publications in the UK. In total, we have found about 1,800 journalists and sent them our press release by email. Within less than a day, our story got picked up by BBC, Cornwall Live, Wells Online, and dozens of other publications in the UK, providing our client a tsunami of backlinks perfectly relevant to the audience of the client who is a specialist in learner driver car insurance. I hope this video is helpful and it shows you how you can also build links with freely available data from official sources. If you want similar link building PR campaigns for your website, head to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them now. All right, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. My name is Jared Bauman, and today we are joined by Jim Campbell with campmedia.com. Jim, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Fan of the, fan of the podcast, fan of the show, so happy to be here. Love it when we get to interview someone who, uh, who who's heard of the Niche Pursuits podcast before, and um, you, you know you have a you know Spencer, so I, I'm sure you have a little bit of a history with what we do here, and you've got a cool story, so this is going to be a fun one, uh, near and dear to my heart. I my first career was a wedding photographer, and we're going to be talking all about honeymoons today, and the websites plural, and the brands that you own in this in this space. So hopefully we'll have a lot of things we can share and banter about. Um, yeah. Before we get into all that, like, tell us about yourself. Give us some backstory maybe before you got into the things you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully I don't go on too long because I've been building websites for quite a while. Um, yeah, I started building websites back in high school. Um, and if you remember, if anyone remembers, I was building them on like Angel Fire. Oh, um, yeah. Just, oh, yeah, it was great. So I was doing that, did one for like video games, then did one... When I was high, in high school for like just humor media, it was even like before YouTube 
and just doing that um, and kind of saw that, okay, I'm getting a lot of traffic to this, to these websites. This is pretty cool. Putting stuff out there and people are actually watching it and, and it, responding to it. So I uh, kind of caught the entrepreneurial and website bug pretty early. And then in college, I didn't study anything related to this, but I did do, I went to Boston College, I did the um, entrepreneurial um, competition there with a mobile app, everyone was building mobile apps at the time, and that kind of led me, I, that kind of opened the door for me to open my world to VC startups and everything, so coming out of college, I wanted to work for a VC-backed startup, and that led me to an angel group, and I actually ended up um, starting a business, an e-commerce business. Um, so I did that for a little bit, um, you know, didn't go anywhere, failed pretty badly, but learned a lot as when I was young. And then I worked for, um, got into more of a, a software route, worked in marketing at a couple different um, software startups, SaaS startups. Uh, that was really, that was great. But like I said, I didn't study any of this in, in college, so I always wanted to go back to business school. So I did that um, about four years ago, went back to business school and did a really tech focused, entrepreneurial focused um, MBA program that was fantastic. And then coming out of that, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I joined um, a rotational program at another SaaS startup in marketing, always related to marketing, always related to building technology and getting, getting users to that technology and selling it. Um, but while I was doing all that, I was still building websites on the side for small businesses, for myself. Um, in 2009, I started one, the first one really for myself in a long time, and that was HoneymoonGoals.com. And I was getting married, I was planning my own honeymoon, and really just didn't see a honeymoon website out there. There really, there's some big wedding websites like NOLA, The Knot, Wedding Wire, um, Zola, not NOLA. Um, but there weren't really like honeymoon specific ones. So I just, when I was doing my own research, I just started putting it on the website. Um, and then that uh, was right before COVID hit and then travel went to zero. Um, but then as travel came back, the site really took off. It was kind of like pent up demand for a year. So that site took off and um, just from an SEO perspective was getting a lot of traffic because I had been working on it for a year, year and a half and kind of planted the idea like, hey, why don't I just do this with multiple websites? I was looking um, on a bunch of different marketplaces to buy up websites like Empire Flippers and FE International and Flippa and was basically looking at these multiples and saying, hey, I could go you know, raise money, buy up a bunch of these websites, start my own and just have a portfolio. And that actually I built a deck, I was shopping it around, just kind of putting out feelers, and that led me to a company called Thrasio. They're a huge uh, Amazon aggregator. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a team that was had the same idea. It, wasn't, it really isn't you know that unique of an idea, but they had the same idea, and what they were doing was actually way smarter because they actually owned a bunch of uh, Amazon products. So instead of getting the 4% commission from Amazon Associates, they you know, own the product and were getting the margins plus the associate commission. So I went there and joined that team. And that was a really good experience um, for just you know learning how to manage a portfolio. We had like 10 websites. We were promoting our own products, uh, met some great people in the space. Um, but at that time, my site, honeymoongoals.com, was really taking off. Um, and it kind of became... Uh, more important for me to focus my time on that site and so it kind of led me to quit my job there and so I started Camp Media where it's Honeymoon Goals and I had a couple, started a couple other websites um, mostly in the travel space and the wedding space because I figured all the partnerships I was getting through Honeymoon Goals, all the traffic, all the keywords, backlinks, everything that I was doing for Honeymoon Goals I could, you know, duplicate, replicate for these other websites and kind of double dip on all these things that I was doing. Um, so I did that about a year ago now, started full time on my own sites. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, I'd reached out to uh, the owners of honeymoons.com just to make an introduction, see what they were doing, seeing if we could work together. Um, and they kind of told me they had started this when they retired in 2008. 
So I was like, do, kind of doing the math. Like you did the in two thousand eight, you started this and you retired. They had tremendous careers in the bridal and honeymoon industries, and they retired from that. They had owned the they owned the domain name. They were their original registrars, and they were just doing it, um, you know, as a business. But they were in their eighties and nineties, and yeah. so that, a couple of months ago, uh, they called me back and said, you know, we're ready to sell, and I said, great, I'm ready to buy it. So closed on that uh, two months ago, last month, July. So um, currently running honeymoons.com and kind of switching from running more of a portfolio to really focusing on, you know, this opportunity to build like a bigger, a bigger website on honeymoon. So really, you know, I think a lot of what my journey to from um, niche websites has been to look at like a portfolio. I was doing that at Thrasio. I was doing that for myself. And as, you know, it kind of builds up and you get bigger opportunities um, to really focus on those bigger opportunities, because I think it makes everything that goes into it um, a little bit easier, honestly. So that's that's been my journey. It's been, wow. been a strange one, but now honeymoon salesman. You, <laughs> you have a resume that I think would take up pages and pages, and I, I know I would kind of kill to have any one of those line items on my resume. I was just writing things down as you, as you went. Mobile apps, e-com, SaaS, business school, uh, Amazon aggregator, <laughs> niche website owner, uh, media company owner now. So you've got all this experience. I mean, before we get into how you built kind of the websites, because that is probably really what most people are going to want to knuckle down and learn from you on. Before we get into that, what, um, what, what about all the experiences that you've had has been perhaps the most influential or helped you the most in the website building space? Yeah, I think um, every company I've worked for, especially the software companies, at the end of the day, they were sales companies. I had multiple CEOs tell me that, you know, and just uh, as they're running their companies and, you know, they have Pro, they were really, you know, product companies, new products, but at the end of the day, they were really just, you know, focusing on sales. And I think that's been um, something that I really took to heart in, especially with building out these these honeymoon uh, businesses. It's, you know, while it's fun to get the, the page views, get the rankings, get the social media followers, you know, really figuring out that final piece of, you know, what, what's going to make someone buy, what's resonating with people, um, and how to, how to focus on that, um, is something that, you know, I think about a lot and maybe I just think about it more because it's uh, my full-time job and that's where all the money comes from. But, um, yeah, I think about that quite a bit. And, you know, I talked to some other website owners and who, who do this full time and, you know, it's, really comes down to that, you know, what are the best partnerships, you know, great, you get a lot of page views, but what are the ones that actually convert? Like, what do people, what do people like? What are the partnerships that matter? Um, so really focusing on that and figuring out how to like productize what you have and, and drive sales. Perfect transition. Let's, let me ask you, I love asking this because it gives people perspective on where things are at. Whatever you're comfortable with sharing um, with these websites, I mean, we have honeymoon goals, we have honeymoons, but like what kind of, uh, and I'm also curious, you know, what kind of uh, perhaps revenue or profit you can share along the way as you made decisions to leave your, you know, your, your full-time job to start Camp Media and that sort of stuff. So maybe where are the brands at right now to give people perspective? Yeah, for sure. And I think it actually just made me realize, I think I left out uh, an important piece in kind of my transition too. So during the pandemic, I just started the honeymoon website and was talking to a friend from business school and uh, the pandemic hit, so then we're just, we're stuck at home, we're sitting there, we're talking about this honeymoon business, and he was like, why don't we start one together? And I was telling <laughs> him all about, you know, the content site, how it works, how you just plot thickens. make content, get links, make content, get links, work on partnerships, and grow it. And he's like, well, that sounds easy enough, like, why, don't, why don't we do one? And at the time, work from home was the major trend. And we both thought it was going to be, you know, huge, kind of life-changing, huge black swan event that's going to change the way that people work forever. So we started a site in the work from home space, and we did that for about two years, and then we sold it last year. Um, and we sold it last year for like low six figures. It was it was very much an affiliate website. It got hit very hard by that product review update because it was a product review website. From it was like the 
the uh, poster boy for product review sites. <laughs> and But it was fun to build. We had a great time. And then when things kind of got back to normal, we kind of got back to our jobs and other things. But uh, So we sold that for low six figures. And... But it kind of made me realize, like, hey, you know, I did this part time. There's a way to exit these, you know, and make significant amounts of money. Um, and that definitely opened my eyes quite a bit to the process of building and selling because I'd never sold a website before. Um, so currently, and at the when I the decision to leave my job, uh, which was, you know, in your question. It was exceeding, you know, my W two income was. I, I was watching the way that um, the way that honeymoons work and how any travel commission based uh, business works is. You don't get paid the commission until people travel. So obviously the pandemic made this very difficult uh, yeah. because people aren't traveling. Yeah. So uh, I was watching, you know, people book, and but I wasn't seeing any commissions come in. So my whole time. The whole time I was saying, if these if these people actually travel, you know, I I'm gonna be able. This is this is more money than I make at my job. Um, so then people finally started traveling, and that was that was great. So when I left my job, um, it the site may was making like mid six figures um, last year, and this year it's gonna be just under um, just under a million dollars. Wow, that's quick growth. That's amazing. A lot of pent up demand. You know, we talk to travel site owners uh, who all have that defining pandemic story <clears throat> of, you know, oh my goodness, like whether it's traffic, whether it's travel itself, so affiliate commissions, monetization, everything kind of comes to a grinding halt. And then these stories of growth that kind of came on the back of it. So, um, well, that's, that's a great story. So obviously we're talking about a site that is doing significantly well. And then I, I, let's... um. I don't know where do we go? Do we do we talk about how you're buying multiple honeymoon or how you have multiple honeymoon sites and start there, or should we talk about how you grew um, honeymoon goals uh, off the, and got that off the ground? And again, I'm really actually asking which one yeah. you think is the better way to go. Yeah, I think um, I think what is interesting to me is like a website builder is definitely like starting honeymoon goals, um, and then I think we can kind of get into like the reasons I overpaid for honeymoons.com and what I'm going to do next. Um, oh, good. You're good yeah. at teasing. You're doing my job for me. You're keeping <laughs> these listeners engaged. They're going to have to stay around yeah. to hear about that story. Um, well, good. I mean, you started honeymoon goals in 2019. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, just maybe a classic, uh, classic uh, question is what sort of focus did you have on this? Um, where, where did you look to grow the site? What worked in the beginning and kind of what got you your first traction? Yeah. Um, so, the the story of getting into it is is pretty easy. I was planning my honeymoon, yeah. right? And I was looking around and I was just saying there's no real honeymoon sites. You know, there are obviously some sites dedicated to honeymoons, but there's no huge ones. And I just thought it was very interesting. Um, and I figured that there's a couple really good things for honeymoons. You know, everyone knows what it is. It's fun to talk about. It's one of the best trips of your life the destinations and the resorts and everything are all amazing. So in terms of like building content for this, one, people are going to look for it. People are going to pay a lot of money for it. And it's fun to write about, you know, it's, I, I've played around with a bunch of uh, different sites. Like I had one in the ceiling fan space. Um, it's hard to write your hundredth article about ceiling fans where hard you know, to be passionate about ceiling article. fan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am not, I, I learned. Um, but it's, uh, honeymoons is, is fun. It's always fun. Uh, people always want to talk about, it. you can talk to someone 20 years after they take their honeymoon and they still want to talk about it. Um, usually. And, so it, it was a fun area to go into, and I think that helped a lot. Where I didn't get bored of it, it was a, I was planning my own. It's all really interesting destinations. So, like I said, I was I was a WordPress you know site builder. So starting starting the website was kind of the easy part for me. Um, but then the harder parts um, were, you know, how do I get content? How do I get authority? Um, and like I said, I was looking at kind of buying up some of these websites to start. And so I had probably 50 different prospectuses and analyses of these websites. And there were just two common, 
there were two inputs to every every website content content and links basically right and so yeah. I said all right I need content and I need links to build the authority so um, I started you know writing the content myself kind of figuring out the template which I think is you know what what everyone does and I think that's the, a really important part you know what do people actually want to know about honeymoons and what and so then figuring out what templates match that so with honeymoons uh, the main thing is where do I want to go and then like what um, destination and then the second question is what resort should I stay at um, mm -hmm. so answering those two questions and kind of framing templated content around those uh, kind of became the strategy, which, again, for honeymoons was excellent. Uh, and you can't really find that in ceiling fans. It's, it's um, you know, make a destination template uh, or make like a best of destinations, best honeymoon destinations to visit in January, best honeymoon destinations to visit in Europe, in the world, best honeymoon destinations with overwater bungalows. You know, you can pick there are a lot of different topics with that template. And then the second one would be, you know, what, what are the best places to stay in Jamaica? You know, like hun Jamaica honeymoon, top 10 resorts. So I had this huge list of, of content that needed to be created. Yeah. Um, and then I just started uh, finding writers and outsourcing it. And since I was, you know, bootstrapping it at the time, did it, did it pretty slowly, did it pretty cheaply, which, you know, I'm sure uh, a lot of people um, can <laughs> attest to it's not always the best option to hire cheap writers, um, whether it was poorly written AI content or copied content, um, but you find your good ones and then you just rinse and repeat. So it really just took probably a year to get um, that content to where, where I wanted it to be. And then for building authority, it was really trying all, all the same tactics that everyone uses, you know, listening to this podcast, listening to other podcasts for any new strategies, and really just trying them all um, to basically um, build up the authority in that site. And so that all worked. And then the pandemic, um, when the pandemic was slowing down, uh, I think I had just this huge tailwind that yeah. really helped to kind of to boost it um, cause I'd been working on it when a lot of other people in the travel industry weren't able to, you know, I feel bad now cause I was like calling travel agents at the time, trying to figure out what they were doing. And they were like, we don't, they don't make money until people travel. So they, they had no business and I, you know, was figuring out the landscape. So, um, they were, a lot of people really went to zero in 2020. Um, and I was able to just keep kind of picking away at it. So coming out of it, I had this this fully built that website that I had been working on and it kind of just took off. True story. I honeymooned in Hawaii and uh, I'd like to say this is not, uh, this is a long time ago, by the way, um, but um, before I was quite the SEO knowledge base that I am now and long story short, we took a quiz on which island was the best island for our personality. <laughs> one of these oh, yeah. probably, yeah. one website probably like yours. Great right. for lead gen. Uh, don't know if I ended up booking our honeymoon through them or just got the idea, but we, I think we literally chose the island in Hawaii based on, frankly, the results okay. from that quiz. <laughs> you're going to have to build one of those. You yeah. should. I mean, it was really cool. Flash personality quiz. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, well, we could, we could talk about it all day, but you know, we were yeah, reading all these cool. articles about what the best island is, but we were like, well, I don't know if that's the best island for us, you know? So anyways. Yeah. What island was it? Kauai. We ended up in Kauai. Nice. nice. Which... We've been back many times to different islands, and you know what? The quiz was pretty yeah. accurate, I'll have to say. Um, so speaking of that, that topic there, like um, I, I was looking at your website. You have, I mean, roughly from what I can tell, like a 1,000 articles or so. So clearly in that three- to four-year time period, you've invested a lot of time and energy into publishing a lot of content. What is, um, does topical authority play a role? Like, do you end up specializing in a certain area? Uh, is that something you focus on? Or is it really um, the, the greater topic of honeymoons? And I'm just going to write everything about honeymoons and just kind of see where the chips fall. Yeah, I think it's more about honeymoons. And I think that, um, you know, listening to a, a lot of things on topical authority, um, I think getting that initial chunk of content done for honeymoons was when it really took off. And, you know, I, I think I was lucky to find 
uh, a space that wasn't super competitive. So once I had a hundred articles of every different destination, um, it uh, it started ranking. And I think I think it's kind of proven in that, like I was saying about the templates, you know, coming up with that destination template and then rinsing and repeating for the most popular countries and areas of the world. Um, the post that really kind of was I think about 40%, 40, 50% of the traffic for that site for a while was just best honeymoon destinations. I've since lost that ranking to like US News or something, but um, that was kind of the post that was driving just a ton of traffic for uh, 2022. And I think that's because I was, you know, really, honeymoon destinations was what I was writing about. So I, I really had a ton of, and still do have a lot of topical authority on on honeymoon destinations. But um, to your point, I think that what's, again, exciting about the space and the travel space is that, you know, what are the opportunities to now build up some authority and just all-inclusive, you know, best all-inclusive resorts. Um, I think there's a lot of different areas you could go. Uh, currently not, you know, doing doing well in anything but honeymoons, but in just the general travel space, right. um, there's a lot of different areas. But yeah, it's a uh, topical authority in honeymoons. Absolutely, was a was a huge a huge thing, and I really actually don't see a lot of traffic coming from non honeymoon queries yet. Yet, <laughs> I hope right. to get some. You're it. right. What about the idea that I'm going to guess with a thousand articles, I didn't deep dive each of them, but you probably haven't been to all the locations. Uh, yeah. You probably haven't gone on a thousand honeymoons. Uh, <laughs> you talked about hiring writers, but how did you solve yeah. any issues or any challenges with making sure that the content was as reflective of what it needed to be for someone to make a decision, a big decision, a large purchasing decision about right. an area that you as the, the kind of the director here haven't been to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had, and it's right. funny, just a, another kind of tidbit on that. I, you know, wish I had started this website 10 years ago because, um, I, uh, have a travel agency now and that, you know, just opens up some doors and gets me into some different programs. But when you do, um, bookings through a travel agency, a lot of the resorts will give you points and you can use those points to travel. And so I have hundreds of nights at, you know, adult only locations, you know, a lot of them in the Caribbean, but I have, I have two small kids and I'm like, I'm, okay, I'm never going to go. But, um, yeah, if it was 10 years, if it was five years ago, I would have, uh, I would have, you, this call would have been from the Caribbean. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, we would have been looking yeah. out the back of yeah. one of these overwater bungalows right now. Exactly. Um, but no, I'm in New Hampshire, so it's all good. Um, for, uh, that, I think, again, the travel space is, is uh, very interesting in this aspect because there's so much information about different destinations online from other sources, from, from primary sources, people that have been there that you can um, put together, you know, I think a, a, val a valuable resource for honeymooning in, in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, wherever. Um, and back to like finding writers that really do this, you know, definitely vetting the writers pretty heavily to figure out who's actually doing their research or who's just kind of using some, you know, boilerplate generic language about the destination. Um, you have one writer who she goes too deep on specific things. I think she, and this is again, another benefit of the honeymoons. People love researching this stuff. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful destinations, beautiful resorts, fun thing, fun, romantic things to do. It beats figuring out like, how many blades you're on the ceiling fan, you know? So, um, and then, yeah, it's not, since it's travel, it's not, um, like product review stuff. So it's not changing very frequently. You know, there's how, what's the best beach in Jamaica? Does that change every year? Probably not. It's probably going to be, be the best beach in Jamaica for a couple decades. And you can, you know, do your research on, on the beach and how crowded it is, what resorts are there, how accessible it is. You can do all that research. So I think it's more about, um, finding people who are going to do the research um, to really, and then tailor that research towards honeymooners, I think is where, um, where the value comes in. You know, I, I, again, would still love to visit these places, but. 
Hey, just a quick break. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Just a quick reminder that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Now, I've got a short clip from Ferry with Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. This is how we landed massive links for our client in The Sun, a DR90 website, and many other UK news websites. We have used freely available data from YouGov to simply find out what the nation's favorite car brand is and which brands people love the most. Of course, Rolls-Royce came out on top, Aston Martin second and Jaguar third. We put these insights in a short email and sent it to journalists that write about cars and to national news desks on behalf of our client. Within a few days, our client got featured in all the suns as well as many regional newspaper sites in the UK, gaining DR90 links to their leasing comparison website. YouGov website is full of unlimited PR stories with data already available for free. All you have to do is to start researching their data and start asking the data questions. You will be surprised of the unlimited PR campaigns that you will find there that can help you build massive exposure and links to your or your client's websites. I hope this video is helpful and inspirational. Like what you just heard and are looking for similar link building PR campaigns for your website? Just go to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Let me ask you about monetization and with a site like this, maybe uh, help people understand. I mean, you're not sending people to Amazon, right? It's not that kind of a, a monetization method. Um, and uh, I also would imagine it's probably most of your income isn't off of you know ads or that sort of thing. So. When it comes to the ways you're monetizing, uh, kind of help us understand a little bit more about how travel works with affiliate yeah. revenue and that sort of that sort of topic, basically. Yeah, so it took me a while to kind of figure this out. Like I had a bunch of sites, like I said, doing Amazon affiliate, and that was very you know straightforward. Send people to Amazon, get all the basket items for 24 hours. Um, with travel, um, I've found, as, and specifically for honeymoons, that. Um, the money is in the uh, bookings and the resorts. Um, for example, like Jamaica Honeymoon, um, there are a lot of resorts in Jamaica, right? And there's a lot of different places that you could go, and they're going to spend a lot of money. So those you know, resorts are willing to um, provide a pretty good commission for bookings. And... That is through, you can do it directly with the resorts or you can do it with um, some of the OTAs like Expedia, Booking.com. Um, I work with, with both of them and do um, direct uh, with hotels quite a bit. But it's 90% of the revenue is from uh, commissions through bookings. And there are a couple other ways. Uh, if anyone else is in the travel industry, I'm sure you know about these. But like TripAdvisor has um, a pretty big affiliate program on um, Commission Junction. I use them for a bunch of stuff. They don't do bookings. They pay you um, kind of on a P PPC, mm -hmm. semi-PPC. Um, but, you know, that's that's honestly pennies compared to dollars for bookings. Yep. And that's, again, kind of like what I said at the beginning, kind of really driving towards sales. I've really um, doubled down on the partners that are working well, where I think honeymooners actually want to stay and actually want to book. And really promoting those to the top because, you know, people are kind of voting with their dollars of saying, hey, I want to stay here. I want to stay at this destination. Um, so booking commissions are about 90 percent. And then on top of that, it's um, I do some display ads. Um, but I think, honestly, a huge area that I'm doing pretty poorly in is direct advertising as well. Um, I th like I said, th there are a lot of uh, resorts that would want to be you know promoted and put in front of people um, and whether i did that on the website or through the email list you know that's something where i think there could be quite a bit of mm. um, of opportunity because there are resorts typically don't have like huge it teams that are going to be able to figure out you know the affiliate program figure out all the technical stuff for actually implementing the affiliate program on their website um, so it's I've, found, I've contacted a lot of resorts about affiliate programs or figuring out how I can refer traffic to them, um, but not a lot of them have programs set up. It, with 90% of your revenue coming from, like you said, getting a booking, 
that's a little bit different for everybody listening who has a website that, say, goes to Amazon. And the reason I say that is once you really learn about how Amazon affiliate works, you, you learn that it's really just about getting people to Amazon. Right. And then they'll just buy stuff. And because of the way their cookie window works and because of the fact that you get commissions on everything they buy in that order time frame, it really on your website just becomes like, just go to Amazon. Just like click here to see the price. You right. know, you use this, this kind of copy, this call to action that is just go to Amazon. That doesn't work, I'm going to guess, at necessarily for you. It's all about the conversion for you. Like what are some tips you can give people listening to have better sales copy or better conversion-focused copy on their websites, especially those who are just used to getting people to Amazon and it just does the work for you. Yeah, definitely. And that's something where it took me, you know, a while to figure this out. Um, I went through a lot of different, you know, programs, every, every travel, uh, affiliate on commission junction. And I've, I've been through all of them and tried them all and really figured out like, all right, here's, you know, where, where people want to stay. And so I think that really came down to just looking at like the data of who was converting. Um, and uh, it was drastic. Like some, some resorts, um, convert literally a hundred times better than wow. others. And whether the tracking just wasn't working on the other ones, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I actually saw a hundred times better conversion rates, um, like with my, with my top partner. So, um, you know, people, whether, and it might just be a much better uh, resort where people want to stay. Um, but for optimizing Amazon uh, sales, actually what, what we were doing at Thrasio um, was really analyzing on like a daily basis, like what people were actually buying, um, which I assume a lot of people do anyways, but you can get that, you know, report um, of the actual item sold. And we would look at that every day to see, um, and compare it to if you have a product review page with, you know, the 10 best um, electric toothbrushes. Uh, maybe you might be promoting one very heavily, but the number three is actually selling. And that might be because there's a deal. It might be because they lowered the price. It might be because, you know, the, the one that you had at number one actually had some bad ratings or, you know, could be anything. So, yeah, I really think looking at, like, looking at what the customers actually end up buying um, was was the guiding uh, principle for a lot of like, because it, it feels a little weird because, right, it's not like your review, you're not saying like, this is the best, but yeah. you also do have to take into account like what customers think are the best and that then that adds value to all your new customers. I feel like TripAdvisor, that, I see yeah. that frequently on TripAdvisor. It's always like, well, this is the one that everybody likes, so. Right, yeah, <laughs> just go here. Hey, last, last question that I have on honeymoon goals, and I, I want to get into all this other stuff. I mean, you yeah. bought a big brand. You started your own travel agency. I mean, we're, we're only scratching the surface here. But how much of a role did non-review content play in honeymoon goals and its growth? Like, did you write informational content? Um, is there, you know, how not to get divorced on your honeymoon? <laughs> or, <laughs> like, do you write these articles, or is it really very review-focused? And because of the nature of the review topics, it doesn't necessitate some of these informational topics that might that might present themselves. Yeah, it's funny. It's not like the standard, um, like, review informational, right? It's kind yeah. of always a mix. That's what I was um, thinking. But, <laughs> yeah, but but honestly, a ton, I, would, I would say the vast majority of my content isn't monetized. You know, it's monetized through display ads, Um it's monetized through maybe a partnership, you know, that isn't, isn't great. Um, but even like I was saying, the best, um, kind of the first question people have with honeymoons, if they have no clue where they, what they want to do is, you know, where do I want to go? Um, and that's just general destinations. Like I was saying the best honeymoon destinations for January, um, that doesn't, that won't lead me to any, um, bookings. It'll be, I'll be like, you should go in January. It's good to go to Jamaica. Or I should probably look up what I actually recommend, but you know, I have recommendations. Um, and you know, then, you know, I have a link to that, that, that page where on Jamaica, I have the best resorts and on that page, I can monetize that page. But, um, I think it was more about, you know, back to kind of topical authority. Like what are people actually searching? What's their journey through it? Right. Um, I don't have a ton of like, uh, you know, just general, you know, fun honeymoon type content um, that would be considered like purely informational. I do um, probably the only things there that I really 
kind of invested into were like I did a research study for um, honeymooners, and that was but that was more of a you know backlink um, yep. acquisition uh, thing. How'd it and work? I think I, I think I think it works because I yeah. think if you search honeymoon stats, I think honeymoon goals is number one. So um, has just interviewed somebody else in the travel space that that talked about that at length and how yeah. their research study just worked wonderfully for hundreds of backlinks. Yeah, I wish I didn't get that result. I wish more people needed to link to honeymoon statistics, but unfortunately it's not a huge, uh, not a ton of writers about that. Um, but hopefully, hopefully some more. Maybe yeah. people will listen to this and want to do some, some studies on honeymoons. Well, I mean, I have, I have so many other questions, and I'm sure a lot of listeners are like, Jared, ask him about social media and backlinks and a lot of stuff. Maybe we'll have time to come back to it, but I do want to hear about the acquisition of honeymoons.com. So with, I know we're leaving a few topics open, but I want to make sure we have time for that because this is an interesting play. Um, and it's, it's a play that I, I want to hear not only how it happened, but then your future plans for it because it's interesting to watch brands roll other brands up and then to see what they do with it. So, you know, you reached out on a whim to, to the owners of honeymoons.com. You told us that story. Maybe just talk us through from a, just a very high level, the, the, the acquisition and how you structured it and, um, uh, you know, just how that played itself out. Cause it sounds very new and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Very new. Um, happy to be on the other side of it as I think most people with acquisitions are, but, um, yeah, so I reached out to them. They had this, you know, great looking website. Um, but honestly, I was, you know, in Ahrefs, I was uh, doing about 10x what they were doing. So I kind of looked at it and always had the idea like, hey, you know, maybe they're doing something else. That was what kind of why I reached out. I was like, maybe they're doing something else that I'm not doing, you know, that is working way better um, than just doing SEO. But um, yeah, I reached out to them. They were they were great people. Um, the guy who was operating it was actually based in New Hampshire, where I'm based, um, which is pretty rare. So I uh, hit it off and talked to him. He called me back a couple months ago, said he had received some offers to buy the website, and they were they were willing to buy it or willing to sell it. Um, so I looked at um, you know the revenue that they were doing, and they were doing you know like. 50 50 K in revenue. And so, you know, based on how you would buy, you know, a business like, like ours, um, you know, three, four times annual profits, they weren't doing, you know, it was a little bit less than that in profits, but obviously with the domain name, you cut, you have to add an X factor. And that's yeah. where the big, the big question came in, um, where it was like, all right, is this going to be a million dollar purchase? Cause you know, I, my pockets aren't that deep. Um, so just worked with them, you know, a lot of back and forth um, on figuring out the best deal structure. And I just ended up paying all cash for it. Um, they didn't want, uh, you know, like an extended, I tried to do seller financing. Um, but uh, I think when you're, when you've been retired for 15 years, I don't really think you have a whole lot of patience, um, but they were great, you know. So ended up buying it, um, you know, overpaid for it um, in, for the X factor of the domain name. But I think the, the more interesting thing is like the reasons for buying it. And I think, the, you know, the real reasons I wanted to do it was obviously it's a great domain name. I love the honeymoon space. Um, but a lot of the things that I've kind of learned in, in running websites and, you know, working at Thrasio, running a bunch of websites there and now you know, running a bunch of my own is that in terms of like building authority, building content, trust, everything gets a lot easier when you, when it's a more legitimate business. I don't, I don't know how else to really say that, but having run great ceiling fans and never having bought a ceiling fan. I was you know, going to reference your ceiling fan brand. Yeah. Like, a good I, contrast. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, that didn't go anywhere and it shouldn't have, right? Because I didn't know anything about ceiling fans. You know, I was just trying the strategy of, mm -hmm. all right, can I just write content about ceiling fans and then put it on the internet and get backlinks to it? And does it rank? Uh, no, you know, you, you should provide a little bit. You obviously can do that. You know, there's plenty of ways to do that. Um, but it's a lot easier when you have, you know, a reputable brand. It's a lot easier to, you know, get real 
high quality backlinks when you have uh, a high quality brand. Um, you know, most a lot of brands don't even think about getting backlinks; right. they just get them, right? Yep. Because they have a big enough a big enough brand, a big enough website, a recognizable name. Um, so I always thought that there's an opportunity if you actually build out, you know, a real business. And it sounds kind of silly because if you say this to people who run real businesses, they're like, what are you talking about? Of course you would just build a real business. But, you know, when you build websites like this, sometimes, you know, you, you have to start without, you know, I started Honeymoon Goals writing recommendations for why you should go to, um, you know, Turks and Caicos. And I hadn't been to Turks and Caicos since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think running building it into like a legitimate business and the opportunities to do that um, were much, much higher. And then that obviously helps, you know, I'm an SEO. So doing that will significantly help um, my SEO. So it's a exciting, exciting thing to have such a like premium domain name and then, you know, be working on building up a much more, you know, established business on top of that to help the SEO. So the burning question is, are you going to blend and merge the domains or are you going to keep the brand separate? Yeah, I'll keep them separate um, for now. I, I don't think there's the domain uh, honeymoons.com came with like 300 posts and then um, they had a bunch of resort reviews as well. So they had some content on there. I'm working on optimizing that content. Um, I think the it's, you know, I can, I think it's better to have two uh, results in the SERPs than one, um, and maybe even three. Like, I have uh, another website in, that's focused on the Caribbean, and, you know, do a, a lot of Caribbean content there. So, yeah, keeping them separate for now and just using the traffic. Um, but the kind of next step that I'm working on right now, again, kind of thinking about how do you go from, you know, a content website, how do you... How do you level that up into something else? Because I see people, you know, selling, selling products. Whether you're selling, you know, uh, internal linking WordPress plugins, or whether you're um, selling informational products, like having something that you own and sell on top of just a content website where you're selling other people's stuff, I think is super interesting because the traffic um, becomes exceptionally more valuable. So I'm currently working on building out a booking engine on honeymoons.com. Um, so instead of referring uh, people to other websites to make bookings, I can collect the bookings um, because as most people running uh, these types of sites know, you lose so much attribution um, when you just, you know, you send people to Amazon, they end up buying, you know, a basket of items you have your tracking IDs, but actually figuring out, you know, who was that customer? How did they come in? What items did they buy? Is always so difficult. Um, where if I can keep that all in house and can capture emails and have people make accounts on honeymoons.com, um, it kind of opens opens that up um, to being a you know a bigger a bigger business. So is I think this, that's where the really exciting thing is. Is this the travel agency or is this the, the, the beginnings of the, the travel agency you started? Yeah, so the travel agency, um, that's that's a whole nother kind of avenue where you could take it. Um, where, you know, hey, you just put a phone number, call us, we'll book your honeymoon. Um, it's something that I'm actively exploring. I've actually, I actually wanted to hire a travel agent this year, um, but just haven't been able to put all the pieces together. Um, but it's more of, um, you can think of it like Expedia.com for honeymoons, you know, just you book it, it's curated list of, um, hotels yep. that are just, you know, I live in, uh, New Hampshire, you know, some people honeymoon here for sure, but where I live, we get zero honeymooners a year. So I don't need hotels, you know, in my town where, uh, the Bahamas, you know, all the four or five stars, the all inclusives, put all those on the website. People can actually go there and book. And I think building out like a honeymoon specific actual booking engine that has all the pieces of that people actually want to, um, to book for their honeymoon. Like uh, there's, you know, do you want super family friendly resorts? Probably not. You're probably not going with your family. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think you can really, I can really curate it to be a honeymoon specific booking engine. Let me ask you about the role that AI plays. A lot of people say that the travel niche 
is well insulated from AI. And I, I use air quotes a bit because, you know, no industry is truly insulated from where AI will, will, will go. But, um, uh, you know, you and I had talked before this interview about your perspectives on AI and how, how you're focused on building something that is a little bit AI proof. And I don't want to put words in your mouth. So let me just kick it over to you and share your thoughts on AI as it relates to the, the businesses that you're working on right now as it relates to this travel space. For sure. Um, I think this is another, is another area where having a bigger, a bigger site, a bigger brand will help you. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a moat to, you know, as everyone who does this knows, you know, it's pretty easy to spin up a website. It's pretty easy to, you can use any of the copywriting, AI generated copywriting servers to spit out a hundred articles and you have a website about honeymoons and, you know, a week um, where having a bigger brand, I think is very helpful to do this. Having a premium domain name is very helpful to protect against that. Um, and then, yeah, I think AI writing, it's, it's so interesting. Uh, I, it's so funny how just what we do in writing content and putting it online to rank in search engines seems to be like the first thing that, um, that AI is very easy to, to replace. So I think travel, well, I think specifically for honeymoons too, um, for AI writing, I mean, you could definitely ask chat GBT to write you an article. Um, it's actually very good at it. Um, mm -hmm. and I think where I, I would almost argue it's like more susceptible to mm -hmm. competitors coming in and being able to write content because of kind of what I was saying before, because things don't change. Like, you know, it's, I don't know what the model is trained on now. I think it's up to like 2021, but I would guess this, the, or I know the reasons to go to Jamaica, um, for your honeymoon are the same as they were in 2021 as they are right. now, where if you were to ask it, if you had a review website for toothbrushes, um, there's new models that it doesn't know about. There's new, you know, there, there are things there that um, it can't actually do where you could ask it to write um, an article about why Jamaica is a great honeymoon destination and it would spit out, you know, a decent article, right? Um, so I think it actually, I think there's so much content out there about um, travel and traveling. I think that writing content with about the travel industry is pretty easy actually with those things. Uh, I think where... I try to get my writers pointed is like what I was saying earlier, like really digging in on the research. Why is this place, you know, such a good honeymoon destination? Why is this resort such a good honeymoon destination? Um, and I think that human touch of digging in and the expertise that they have, you know, having written dozens, hundreds of articles, what they look for and how they put it together and how you structure it on a website is still more important. This will dovetail nicely, and I teased it earlier, so I'm glad I have time to ask you. How important are, we'll call it, secondary or maybe intangible things to your website? Uh, social media, you know, do you put a, uh, an effort in social media? Uh, unique custom images from these destinations. Uh, video, you know, is video something that is important to your strategy? Uh, even like author expertise, having them published elsewhere, having them be, you know, hey, I know about Jamaica because I travel there versus like, no, I'm a travel yeah. agent that does it. So I just hit a, I threw a lot of stuff at you. Feel free to yeah. run with it. But I'm just curious, these secondary things that we talk about are intangibles. There's, there's a lot of hunch that they, they can help with AI. So it's dovetails off that, but into your strategies as it relates to those topics. Yeah, I think uh, those are all extremely high on my list for how to improve honeymoons.com. Um, I think the social media, I've found that um, it's, it's tricky because honeymoons is people pay a lot of money for them. Um, and so they're usually, I, I do some paid advertising and only bid for uh, desktops. So if you, most people use social media on their phones, you're probably not going to book a $10,000 honeymoon on your phone, right? And like with the cookies and everything, if I cookie you on your phone and then you move to your desktop, I'm going to, you know, it's, it's kind of a waste. I've found that um, honeymoons, again, are great. They're so visual that, you know, yeah. it's, it's, a great, it's a great thing to promote. Um, but I found that Pinterest is really the only place where I was um, able to get results with honeymoon goals. 
Um, so have like 35,000 followers on Pinterest on honeymoon goals. And that's just posting, you know, beautiful pictures of destinations and people want to pin those and save those. And I love Pinterest because it actually, you can use, you can click out to the website where if you're on Instagram, um, yeah. you know, you can't TikTok. It's very hard, you know, link in bio, and then it's a mobile phone click. So I love Pinterest um, and we'll definitely double down there. Um, and then for videos, that one is huge on my list. I'm tr currently trying to figure out ways to actually send people to destinations and make videos. That's I'll, I'll, I'll just sign me up. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to go? Um, you mentioned some of those places. They're on my list, so I'll, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm looking. I'm currently looking at you know part either partnering with influencers, yep. trying to trying to work with some brands to get them to pay for it. Yep. Right. You know, figure something, figure out a partnership there. But as I look at um, people, some of the smartest people I know in SEO have, in the past two years, created some pretty big YouTube channels. Um, so they're probably onto something. You know, that's where a lot of eyeballs are going. Mm -hmm. It's where a lot of searches are going. And again, honeymoons are a great topic, a great thing to search and look for. Um, they're very visual, but without having that. The content, uh, they're hard to create. So I do have some honeymoon content, but it's not really the quality I'd like it to be. So that's huge. And then you also mentioned author expertise. And I think that's a really important one. And again, going back to like, how do you build actual, actual authority instead of kind of this pretend authority that you have to start with? Um, and so I'm currently hiring uh, editors and writers from, you know, the t people that I find that are the top um, contributors to some popular websites. I'm also looking at having travel agents come in and, you know, if you're a travel agent who is uh, an expert at Caribbean honeymoons, currently looking at hiring some of them to come in and edit my content. So I'm creating this, uh, I guess, editorial layer. Mm -hmm. that will be, they'll be given, you know, attribution for editing uh, the content and you can do the author bios and do the, you know, scene here, link out to their socials. And so I have a couple people who I'm actually going to start uh, probably next month. So I think that's, I'm really excited about that. One, to make the content better, right? And then, you know, thinking with my SEO hat on, it's, it's fun to think about how that's yeah. going to have an impact. You have a lot of work ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Jim, this was, this was really, really great. I uh, really appreciate you coming on board. It's, uh, uh, like I said, your resume alone speaks for itself, but just getting into the details on the honeymoon websites and journey you've had is, uh, has been really interesting. Um, I've taken a lot away from it, so thank you for joining us. And where can people follow along with what you're doing and uh, you know, reach out if they have any, anything they need to? Yeah, I'm on. I, to reach out to me personally, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and then campmedia.com has an email sign up. Um, and if you want to book a honeymoon, go to honeymoons.com. There, there you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if you want to be an influencer and yeah, uh, you video, you'll have to get in line after I apply. So, <laughs> yeah. But seriously, if, uh, if you have a travel follow, if you have a big following and um, can edit videos and you want to travel to some interesting places, I'm currently trying to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Well, you never know. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have travel uh, interests so. on, this, uh, on this podcast listening. So, Jim, thanks so much. And until we catch up again, appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. Today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. What a masterpiece PR link building campaign with 20 links in big publications such as The Sun, Express, Mirror, Wales Online and Still Landing, I would say this campaign is a massive success. We told the press that people should turn on their heating this summer if they want to save money next winter. And we landed over 20 links in national and regional UK publications for our boiler client. That's crazy. The campaign hook was pretty clever. It is a known fact, at least in the boiler trade, 
that if you keep your boiler off for many months, it might rust and it might get you into trouble if you keep it turned off from spring to next winter. We therefore advise the press with an expert commentary piece on behalf of our boiler client that people should turn on their boilers this summer just when the heat wave is in full swing. This way they can avoid a boiler failure next winter and save money. Massive publications picked up our story including The Sun, Express, Mirror, Wales Online and a few more dozen publications giving our client links, lots of links and lots of happiness hormones. No wonder that so many journalists covered our story as this headline is a massive link magnet to their audience. This case study highlights the fact that a clever hook can be applied to any insight or story to make a campaign more successful and more compelling to journalists. Can you imagine when people see this headline in the news, you should turn on your boiler this summer. There is no way they would not click on it. I would click on it. So this was the hook and this is why this campaign was so successful. I hope this video inspires and shows you what's possible with a clever hook. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Just a final reminder that it was brought to you by Search Intelligence. And if you're looking for link building PR campaigns for your website, just head over to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Cheers.